welcome to part three of the video series about building our house. This part is all about uh, making the crawl space uh, vapor tight, air tight, and uh, doing a little bit of the framing, getting going on that. <laughs> So this is about where we left off in the last video. We had finished building the foundation and that black stuff that you see around the bottom of the foundation, that's just a damp proofing. Now it's not a 100% waterproof layer, but it just helps a little bit with the bulk water. Uh, then on the inside of that, you can see uh, we got some of the vapor barrier in place and the sill plates. Now the sill plates on this project are very important because the foundation wall is, is wavy and it's out of square. So I'm using the sill plates to create a, a, a square, a good rectangle with 90 degree corners. And uh, part of doing that is that you'll notice there's an overhang. Uh, and different parts of the foundation have a different amount of overhang, uh, but this was to make it you know, straight. So most of these sill plates are actually two by eights. Uh, one wall has two by six. And then this front wall here, these are actually the massive two by 12s uh, that I went out and got. Uh, so there, because in one corner, there's so much of an overhang that I actually needed two by 12 to kind of cantilever out and then um, come back in over the, the foundation enough to grab these anchor bolts. <laughs> you see how wavy it is. I mean, what a mess. Uh, but at least now with the uh, wood framing, it's gonna be a square square structure. <laughs> uh, these little white dimples, those are uh, these little plastic anchors. You basically you pre-drill the hole in the foundation and then you tap these things in and they help hold that vapor barrier in place. Uh, you might notice there, this vapor barrier has some nylon threads to reinforce it. It's a bit tougher product uh, and you know it, it really you probably don't need to do this. It, it was the first time that I did it where I wanted to use a thicker, tougher fabric. Uh, but, um, you know, if, if it's gonna be underneath uh, things and it's not gonna be messed around with, then you can probably get away with something thinner. Uh, here I was holding it up. Now, I probably would have done this a little bit different in the future. I probably would have installed the vapor barrier uh, later on in the build. But what I was thinking was, hey, I got to get the insulation, the foam board insulation and the vapor barrier down in there, because how else am I going to get these big things in place uh, when the framing's done? In this shot, I'm showing you the, the double lap of this kind of joint. There's a double sided tape uh, between the two layers. And then there's also a four inch wide uh, tape over the seam. So there's actually two Fat, two ways that we got that barrier uh, taped together. And that worked really well. So I was pleased with the vapor barrier. So now I cut the top of the vapor barrier flush with the top of the foundation and I folded all four corners nice and neat and tidy so that there's uh, not a long seam going down that corner. Now I capped the top of the foundation using uh, Grace Brand Ice and Water Shield. Uh, this is a good, you know, sticky rubber product to use. It's typically used uh, on the eaves of roofs. And I lapped it over the top of the vapor barrier so it actually covers all those little plastic anchor points so that those plastic anchor points are sealed. Uh, it also uh, provides a capillary break between the foundation and the wood so the moisture uh, can't drive through that. Uh, and it, the other very important thing is that it gives me something on the outside of the foundation uh, to tape to in the future so that my exterior air boundary is tied back to the inside air boundary, which is the vapor barrier. Now, you don't always have to do it this way. There's lots of ways to do this, uh, but you need to think through how are those trans transitions going to happen so that one plane uh, ties back into another, and that could be an adhesive, a caulking, a tape, uh, or maybe there's something else. Now, I did put some sill seal on top of that uh, because um, I was just worried that the inspector 
uh, would would want something there anyways. Uh, but you know, it, it really doesn't serve uh, a purpose in this application where I already have the Grace Ice and Water on there. One of the way over the top fussy details that I did, I actually sealed these holes in the ice and water up with um, just some adhesive, some construction adhesive. And that's because there's a little bit of air leakage that can occur through concrete. Concrete is not a perfect air barrier. So this is just me going way crazy with the air sealing details on this project. I was really pleased with the way the sill plate actually did come out in the end. It's a pressure treated sill plate uh, on the bottom and then a kiln dried on top. I have lap joint corners uh, to make it even stronger. Uh, none of the seams line up uh, and it's nice and square. This base plate is for the posts. Now this is directly over those footers that I had put in earlier. Uh, and now that the posts are gonna go down there, uh, I actually could seal underneath that with some more adhesive uh, so that the air boundary is still intact. I pulled this string nice and tight across the top of the sill plate from one side to the other uh, in order to get a measurement for how tall to cut the post, which is gonna hold the girder up in the middle of the foundation. And so I moved the string down the line as I went. You can see how I can read that measurement now real precise. And now we got all the posts in place, uh, ready for the girder, which is gonna sit right on top of them. Here's the girder. It's three ply of two by 12s with the joints offset from one another and over the posts. Uh, I use a couple of clamps just to pull it together, uh, take out any unevenness. And for the astute among you, you might notice that it does not go all the way to the foundation. It does not sit in a beam pocket. And I did this on purpose so that the end of the girder there does not act like a thermal bridge uh, to the outside. Uh, it's a, it was an important detail to me. Uh, it's something that I did not have to go air seal later. And you'll see in the upcoming video how I had to deal with that uh, because you have to keep the beam from shifting laterally. Thanks for watching the video, and if you enjoy these, please like and subscribe and share. Uh, next episode is going to be about actually starting the framing. Uh, a couple of details that I did a little bit different than normal.